Welcome to the latest webinar in our alumni webinar series. This will be our first webinar for 2019, but we will have monthly webinars from here on out. My name is Casey and I'm the program coordinator of US Jet AA. I will be moderating the webinar today. First, I'd like to welcome today's speaker, Ayana Matthews. Thank you for joining us. Today's webinar will provide information on how your years on JET can help prepare you for a career in international business, particularly how women can be an asset in the field. Uh, our JET alumna will talk about business trends and her experience firsthand of the pros and cons of working in global business. She will also talk about the skill, set, the skill sets innate to women often overlooked because those skills are not quantifiable, skills such as networking, communication, and being a great sales opener all of which are essential in business regardless of the industry. But before we begin, I'd like to introduce US Jet AA, the United States Japan Exchange and Teaching Program Alumni Association. US Jet AA is a nonprofit organization that furthers the US Japan relationship by supporting alumni of the Jet program. We provide resources for individual Jet alumni, Jet AA chapters nationwide, and potential Jet participants. We also help the 19 US Jet AA chapters with programming, membership recruitment, chapter management, leadership, professional development, and fundraising. If you are a Jet program alumni and you aren't already a member, please join us for free today at usjetaa.org. We currently run four annual programs. The first is a partnership with Sasakawa USA to provide grant funding to JET AA chapters and subchapters to hold events in their local communities on US-Japan relations. The application for this program has already closed for the year, um, but you should check again next fall to see program details. We also facilitate a leadership program funded by the Japan Foundation CGP and CLARE, where representatives from US JET AA visit JET AA chapters and subchapters to hold tailored workshops focused on leadership and growth. Applications for this program are on a rolling basis, so you should definitely check the website for that one. Um, our third program is the webinar series. We hold two different types of webinars, one for JET AA chapter leaders and the other for individual JET alumni. So thank you for being a part of this. Our fourth program is the microgrant initiative with the US Embassy Tokyo, which funds current American JETs for projects in their schools and communities. The application deadline for this program has also already passed for this year, but it usually opens again in the fall. Uh, one final program that we have recently started doing is uh, between US Jet AA and East West Center in Washington, DC. We're calling for Jet alumni to be authors and write articles for the East West Center website, Asia Matters for America. Our first deadline has already passed, but our second deadline is April 15, 2019. So if you're interested, you should definitely check out the website and submit something for that. Uh, before I turn the mic over to Ayana, I'd like to let listeners know that we are recording the webinar and we'll post it on our website afterwards for those who can't attend. Uh, please hold your questions until the end or you can type them into the chat box at any time and uh, we'll be reading them and answer them at the end. Uh, during the Q&A, you can also use the raise hand function if you would like to ask a question with your microphone. So you can do two things. You can either type it into the chat box or you can do the raise hand function. Um, and both of those, you should be able to ask questions. Uh, now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Ayana. All right, thank you so much for that. So thank you all so much for joining in this webinar. Let me go ahead and initiate the, um, the PowerPoint presentation here. For you guys to see. And I really hope that you guys um, take advantage of the various functions and being able to engage uh, in this webinar. Um, you know, I want to hear your beautiful voices as well. So if you guys can ask the questions, I would really appreciate it. So um, thank you, Casey, for this introduction. And thank you, uh, US Jet AA, for allowing me to conduct and host uh, this presentation on women's influence in international business. Um, I'm a, a Jet alumna. I lived in Miyagi for three years, uh, 2007, 2010. 
And um, the purpose of this is a compilation of my experiences, both personal encounters and observances uh, of some credible in, uh, women that I've encountered over the years who are in, involved in international business. And the importance of speaking on this topic is founded in these primary elements. Number one being desire. Um, growing up as an American in a typical middle-class household um, to American parents, I've always had a desire to explore the international communities, foreign languages and culture. I was fortunate to have supportive parents and grew up in a city which made accessing international communities relatively easy. Uh, the second element is knowledge. Knowledge is power. I know we kind of hear that all the time, but it truly is. And if you know what is essential for putting yourself in a better position, then you can set forth to accomplish those goals. So um, many of us who elected to pursue um, the JET program, for example, you know, we were taking uh, advantage and consideration of the knowledge of um, you know, entering into Japanese society. Some of us have acquired uh, Japanese language uh, reading and writing skills. Um, and so you know, just being able to, you know, to, use, to use those skill sets that we attained while we were on the JET program to better position us uh, for future career goals. The third of these elements is application. So how do we you know, make this applicable for uh, jobs and our career paths? Um, it's understanding how to apply that knowledge and leveraging that information that makes us, as far as women, uh, like a diva, diva boss. And so it's the application is what builds the experience. And experience is what helps us become an authority in that field. Um, so just wanted to talk about that. I myself am, am an entrepreneur. Uh, I'm proudly, proud to say that I've been um, running Gartner Matthews uh, for 11 years now. And so when I initially launched the company, it was uh, Gartner Matthews Travel Concierge, uh, which meant that it was a travel consultancy specializing in customized itineraries in three sectors of travel. Uh, festivals was the initial launch. We added leisure and then corporate travel. Once the corporate travel um, started, how can I say, um, getting more you know, spe special, specialized requests, I decided to expand the corporate side or the corporate sector of the business and providing, um, in addition to business, international business travel, but also incorporated international business development and business matchmaking services. So, um, you know, I never would have known that my relationship with Japan, uh, which included the JET program, but actually started uh, when I was a student at Chiba University in 1999, uh, would you know develop this now 20 year relationship with Japan. So I'm really happy and proud um, to be able to take um, all of the things that I've learned from my corporate America experience, my experience in, in the JET program uh, to be able to have these areas of expertise that you see listed under my picture, you know, international business development, uh, relationship management, logistics, uh, foreign direct investment and uh, strategic planning. So as we're gonna go on to the next slide, here's an overview of how uh, the webinar will take place. And here are the highlighted um, topics that I'll be discussing this evening. So, um, so again, if you guys have any questions, as Casey mentioned, you know, please type them in the chat box uh, or you know, use the raise your hand uh, feature. All right, so the first thing we're gonna cover is uh, global business savvy. So in US business, uh, or I'm sorry, US business places an importance on the understanding of the market and competition. However, being savvy in global business, um, I've heard many women, myself included, incorporating three center points. Those points are functionality, need, and trends. So what is functionality? is understanding how do people function and how can you relate to those people or how can you function with those people in that part of the world? Um, need, well, what is the need of the decision maker or the influencer of the entity that you're engaging? And number three related to trends is fueling yourself with global business trends 
found in the local magazines, the newspapers and journals, and of course, social media. I mean, a lot of people, a lot of organizations are, you know, turning to social media and I mean, heavily marketing, you know, new technologies, uh, new finds, new uh, goals and accomplishments. So it's really, really important. And of course, um, you can see this um, as, as it relates to Japan. Um, I often check out what's trending in business conversations uh, by tuning into TED Talks in, in Kyoto or Tokyo. So that's really important too. Um, additionally, I would uh, strongly suggest that when you're conducting searches, for example, online, you know, most of us uh, go to Google, but you know, using the country's exchange is a great way to expand your search and find out what's going on and what's trending in that specific market. So, um, for example, instead of going to www.google.com, you would do google.cl if you're trying to find some information for Google Chile. Also using popular chat ads of that region. We've all lived in Japan. Most of us have a line account. And, you know, we understand that most Japanese are going to have a line account. And it kind of makes, you know, it definitely makes you, um, it, it gives you a perception to the locals that you're in tune to how they're communicating. And it's very, very helpful. So using these applications, um, of course, keeps you connected. It makes you um, look like you're understanding how they function again, um, the way, exactly the way locals do. The next slide here is uh, we'll have a look at the cosmopolitan outlook. In this case, I mean worldwide scope. The points of region, culture, uh, history, geography, and psychology are interwoven. A lot of people try to, you know, separate them. And, and there are, you know, some very hard lines, but, you know, as it relates to us as women, you know, working in the global business, they're very interwoven and we understand, we have an inept ability to understand these intricacies. And so um, I strongly believe that's exactly what it takes um, to do business on an international playing field and to make it rewarding and fulfilling for us because we understand how to uh, you know, smoothly blend uh, these different uh, components. So, because you know, when you're sitting across the table from someone who is from thousands, thousands of miles away, and you can click with them based on the understanding of these points listed, then you've cleared a major hurdle. And it makes the um, you know, future conversation and dialogue for business that much easier. The most popular method of connecting I found is through avid reading and personal engagement. So um, I've gained a, a wealth of understanding about Latin America through my Latin American studies. Um, when I was an undergrad at RIT, for example, but by continuing, you know, to read or be involved in the case as it relates to Japan, um, you know, the uh, Japanese newspaper Asahi Times, uh, Japan, the Asahi Shimbun and Japan Times, um, you know, and also reading works, you know, a lot of us are well read, we like to read novels, so we pick up a book by an author of that country and then we can use that in our discussion when we're doing business as well, because at some point, you know, you're going to, you know, not talk shop the whole time. You, you bring out your personal interests and hobbies into the conversation is really, really impactful. So I'm um, also in the areas of politics and economic instability. Um, women tend to take a closer look uh, for consideration of safety. So following some elections, um, and, and I'm, I'm stating this as it relates to, you know, learning about which geographic location we want to go to and how um, the, the, the political and economic climate may impact our decision to move to certain countries. Um, but, you know, following some elections, you definitely want to have your ear to the ground and, you know, understanding what's going on as far as, as it relates to some possible civil unrest and make certain decisions, um, you know, on how you engage in global business that way. And this side, uh, so I mentioned about, you know, women having an inept ability 
to understand the sum total of a person's background. And so with this foundation, we also have an ability to communicate cross-culturally. And so the greater number of women who hold positions in marketing and communications and journalism and sales should be seen as an indicator of this type of ability because we're, you know, all of those uh, fields are strictly based on communication. So why is this even important? Well, um, as it relates to emerging markets, uh, for example, the African nations of Nigeria or Cote d'Ivoire or South Africa, um, if we look at Latin America, with Brazil being a very strong uh, emerging market business in these countries are, are purely, I shouldn't say purely, they're strongly relationship-based, meaning that uh, most of the initial business encounters and meetings are going to be spent discussing personal affairs, such as family, background, and hobbies. These types of discussions could very well last up to three days, depending on the market. And you know, that's just something that we don't do in America. You know, we have our agenda, you know, we got our time carved out, you know, maybe it'll take two hours. You know, if it's a dinner, you know, that's gonna be, you know, a certain amount of time. But these, in these markets, they really just wanna sit down and get to understand you. Well, we as women, you know, we're, we're very, you know, that's like an, an organic, engaging process for us anyway. We're natural connectors. So because of that, we're all already at, a, um, at an advantage, advantage uh, point to enter and influence these markets. And of course, these markets need, um, you know, each market needs to be evaluated independently and with respect to the industry that you're coming from or working in. Just gonna make sure that I don't have any questions, no one. Okay, no, I don't see anything just yet. So one of the things regarding um, self-assurance is, um, and I listed these items here, you know, um, these bullet points based on what can be perceived of very negatively in corporate America. You know, if a woman is laughing too much, you know, people don't tend, tend not all the time, but tend not to take her serious. Or, you know, if you take a risk and let's say you make a mistake, oh my God, you know, now, now you just kind of stuck in some positions. Well, you know, I've myself seen and women in the global market, you know, they feel good. Like, you know, they have self-assurance, they're, they're confident, they're excited. Um, you know, they, they walk in having a great, um, you know, ability to have that confidence, walk into the meeting, state what needs to be stated and, and get their message across or in the instance where they need to uh, do a lot of convincing or negotiating because they have that self-assurance. They're not going in feeling like, you know, oh, I need to be, you know, careful about what I say and do and things like that. So, um, you know, humor in a lot of these uh, international markets uh, is, is actually perceived, you know, I mean, is great, well-received. And to have the ideas of, of women so, um, is supported in the international playing field. You know, like they're, they're willing to help support you in taking these risks, which means that you're now more creative and you go and you find um, very non-traditional solutions to, to certain problems, which will, you know, help the company grow. Um, another thing too is, you know, being, uh, energized and less drained. And this can be attributed to a work-life balance. And less, less stress can be compared to a male counterpart, um, you know, here in the U.S., whereas if you're working in the international market, women just tend to not feel that. And th this is really, really huge. Um, I know I asked a few minutes ago, but I just want to ask again, does anybody have any questions? Because I'm a Oh, wait, I think, I think there is. Okay, sorry. Casey uh, typed in a message here. Well, we're just moving right along. All right, so our next slide, or this slide here, is going to highlight women's excellent networking abilities. Women who are successful in international business 
they automatically understand they must invest in their social capital. Um, what does that mean? That means applying this invest, you know, an investment in having good, solid contacts, not only um, you know, with people that are in the same uh, level as you, but also in uh, vertical positions as well. And because women are quite resourceful, um, which is a great skill for networking, many women are already connected to multiple industries outside of the one that they work in. So it's been my experience that if you show up, let's say to a networking event, um, three, I would say at least three or more international business chamber events, you know, okay, people start to recognize you. Why? Because let's say if you're going to um, the Japanese, you know, uh, meeting or business meeting, you're going to stand out. And if you're engaging, people start remembering you because you're different. And you're a woman who lived in Japan that has, you know, this really unique skill set. And so if you're a foreigner, you know, as we experienced in Japan, you, are, you automatically stick out. And but the key to networking is being able to make you worth knowing. So why does somebody need to engage with you and then continue the conversation with you asking what you do? and being able to help you, because that's the purpose of networking, not just to meet a whole bunch of people, but to meet people that can help you achieve your, um, your career goal, or if it's a project that you're working on, you're building a small team. And so what happens is, you know, you meet these people, they wind up being your interest, you know, they start introducing you to other people in the group. So now you have somebody that's serving as your, um, like your ambassador, so to speak. And they say, hey, you know, I met Ayana and, you know, wow, you know, can't believe she lived in Japan and she has this background, you know, in business development. And because that person is speaking on your behalf, you know, there's already some credibility that has been established and that, that's really something that you want. And then at that point, you can take over the conversation and go into, you know, who you are, what you do, and, you know, even more unique uh, skills that you have. Uh, networking in global business is a beneficial use of your time and effort. So um, leveraging contacts, uh, you know, to make contact, I'm sorry, leveraging contacts to make introductions for you is very important. Because again, it's like what I was saying about the emerging markets, building that relationship. You know, here, you know, we do a lot of cold calling, but as we know in Japan, you know, we, we know how to, to uh, that it's good and or necessary to have someone to introduce you. It just helps cut, you know, some of the tension. So, um, so you get far more along, uh, you know, way more effective if, you if you're working with somebody within the organization or having somebody who knows somebody within the organization that can help you connect to key people um, either in that community and then they help you um, join even more relevant events, um, you know, that helps you go along. So that's that. Now, before I get into the, um, the slide on women-friendly international markets, I just wanted to ask a question. Um, of the following three countries, which do you guys think is the top woman-friendly market Number one, uh, Switzerland, number two, South Africa, or number three, Singapore? And I'm gonna repeat the question again. So of the following three countries, which do you th think is the most woman-friendly of the three? Number one, Switzerland, number two, South Africa, number three, Singapore. And you can go ahead and type your answer into the, the chat box so we can see them. Okay, Cassie thinks of South Africa. Uh, Casey thinks of Singapore. Joy thinks of Singapore. Oh, and then we have somebody being a jokester. <laughs> the one that begins to. Okay, we got Singapore. A lot of people are saying Singapore. That's quite interesting. Well, the actual answer is South Africa, <laughs> believe it or not. 
Um, South Africa is one of the BRICS nation, and that includes Brazil, Russia, India, and China. Um, these BRICS nations ex uh, exceed 30% compared to the 20% in the G7 nations that are women friendly. So, um, so if anybody, you know, is thinking about, you know, wh where should they go as far as looking, uh -oh. um, you know, for like international opportunities, South Africa works. Uh, it's an English speaking country. Um, you know what they English is one of the official languages of that country. Let me let me state that correctly. Um, you know, wonderful climate and um, you know a lot of accessibility, and it's growing. I mean, it, it's beautiful and it's growing by leaps and bounds. Interesting enough, though, um, according to the 2017 Grant Thornton's um, Women in Business report, Russia actually ranked as the top global spot. Uh, for with 47% with of their senior roles being occupied by women. That, that's crazy. So, you know, um, how does that compare? Well, the U.S. ranks at number 15 on that list uh, with 42.7 of women in managerial positions, not senior roles. Uh, Turkey ranks higher than any U.S., U, I'm sorry, EU nation, uh, with an average of 12% uh, in chief executive roles. And that's according to a, a 2016 World Bank report. There are a couple of links that I'll send over um, um, to be able to access these reports, which are really, really interesting. Um, and so I'll make sure that they're included in the recap uh, that USJAA sends out uh, following. Now I just want to go over U.S. challenges, um, U.S. challenges and global advantages. Advantages. Now let's compare the U.S. challenges to global advantages, um, in which U.S. challenges we we continue to see uh, women underrepresented in uh, STEM fields. Uh, we also continue to see common practices of women in inequality, uh, discrimination. Um, particularly with the pay. And so um, the, the, these are some serious issues, and I know that there are organizations and um, you know, companies that are aggressively trying to change this for the U.S. or corporate America, but they're, you know, present day, you know, we know that they still exist. But as it relates to um, the global market, um, the global advantages uh, we see in women is that they're being heard. Uh, their ideas are being brought to the table, they're sitting down, they're being analyzed, and when it makes sense, they're actually incorporated or implemented. Uh, women are seeing value for their work experiences and applying uh, their, ex um, their foreign uh, experiences to you know, their jobs. Um, we also see um, competing for level salaries that there is a, a level playing field between you know, what a man makes overseas and what a woman will make overseas. And um, achieving both uh, uh, growth on both sides, both personal and professional. Women feel fulfilled, they feel happy they, because they feel appreciated. And then outside of work, you know, they're able to go out and enjoy and not you know, take work home and, you know, literally be working seven days a week trying to keep up, um, you know, because, because they just don't have that um, outside pressure. Um, and then they're able to foster and develop their, pre their professional network. Um, other advantages are cultural. Um, a, great, a greater sense of trust is there, um, feeling that you simply know more by being from another country. So for example, as an American, a lot of people, you know, sometimes it is a pressure, but a lot of people feel like, you know, when well, you're from America, you studied at a, you know, a, a good school, um, you have certain skill sets that we need in this market or, or in, at that company in that market. And so it's just this greater sense of, we trust what you're saying. And so even being a woman, your idea and what your thoughts and your ideas are are trusted not immediately oh you don't know what you're talking about you don't know what you're doing 
Um, so just wanted to um, highlight that. So um, what does this all mean? You know, how, how, how do we take, you know, what's been discussed this evening as far as, um, oh, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. There was a question back from when we were doing the, um, the, the quiz there. Somebody was asking, what are the countries rank bottom for women-friendly markets? I do not have the answer to that because I always try to look at the positive and progressive. So, but I will do some research and as I send the link over um, to those reports that were mentioned two slides back, um, I'll try to find that information as well, okay? Um, so anyway, so back to the real world applica applications. Overall, it's just, it's necessary to be well versed in your industry and you've got to have a solid network which can become something like your personal book of business. Uh, organizations strongly consider candidates for their connections and influence as well as their knowledge base. So, you know, what that means is if you have, you know, good connections in, on LinkedIn and you know certain people that can help you know, uh, facilitate a certain request, then an organization is going to look at you and say, yeah, you know, during that, especially during that interview process, they're going to look at you and say, wow, you know, we really need this person because she's connected to this person, that person, and that's going to help us out a lot. Um, my experience in working in a global capacity uh, for nearly two decades is key. Like, I found it that it's been, it's key and being proficient in a foreign language, particularly when involved in business development. It helps make you relatable to the people in the market. Um, they connect to you simply because you took out time to learn their language. And also having proficiency in the language helps the locals. Um, it's kind of like make, keeping them honest because now they know, okay, she knows what I'm talking about and, I, and they can not have side conversations, you know, uh, when it comes to negotiations or even talking about you, like now they have to just kind of, you know, not do that. Another skill, and I'm using air quotes, so to speak, is, I mean, just showing up, simply showing up and being ready to be a player and lead. That's really, really key. Um, I'm delighted, so delighted to know um, so many successful women that have taken their careers overseas, and I mean, they have some of the most impressive resumes because of the um, opportunities that have that they've been provided simply by, lead, you know, not focusing on working um, in corporate America. And this is even if they um, opt to work for American companies. But the fact that they're working in the global market, they've been able to grow and, you know, get promotions and work on, you know, some really cool projects. Um, I've known women in various fields that range from uh, nuclear engineering, um, as well as international corporate law. And those who are um, senior exec executives um, in finance. And also, um, recently, I, I met um, the CEO of, uh, of a huge uh, aviation company. So um, these ladies are successfully established or have successfully established themselves as influencers, and they're making significant impacts on the global uh, global scale. Um, before I launched my business, I'd always wanted to work with companies that had an international presence. So my impression was that I would grow into a position that would place me overseas. But it wasn't until I applied for a lot of those positions um, directly with foreign entities. I'm sorry, it wasn't until I applied directly for those positions with the foreign entities that I was you know, I felt like I start, you know, seeing some lead way that my ideas that I could work, um, you know, quite seriously and have my ideas taken seriously um, to be able to use or be, how can I say, that I could, my ideas could be taken seriously enough for the projects that I was, I was working on. And so fortunately enough, um, Japan was that, that country. And so, um, you know, my interactions were different because my focus was different. But I recall people extending me um, a lot of respect and actually encouraging me 
to, you know, consider different things, which is how I ended up doing exactly what I'm doing now. So, you know, what I'm trying to say is you might not go and have the exact, you know, uh, footprint or blueprint for what it is that you want to do. But as you meet different people, they will help you be able to, to define what it is that works for you and to be able to highlight your, um, your skill set. Um, I'm very happy to say that, you know, my unique background has qualified me for a lot of really incredible um, projects. And I've uh, supported foreign companies based in the U.S. And I've also consulted for U.S. companies in their international endeavors. Um, a common factor is that the international businesses, um, sometimes they lack confidence. So, you know, as a woman, you might want to be able to say, hey, I have this connection with this market that we, you know, you might not know a whole bunch about, but I do. And then you start, you know, off like as a consultant for them and helping them to, um, to enter into that market. And, you know, guess what? Maybe like it was for me, for you, you know, you'll be able to feel at ease and, um, you know, and, and being able to help that company or help your organization be successful in these new markets. Um, another thing I wanted to, to share upon before I close out is that, um, you know, you just have to feel at ease. You got to be ready to show up. You got to, and it's okay to be you. Like we as women, we have very unique um, and dynamic personalities and that works um, to our advantage in the global markets because, you know, they don't, the people in the emerging markets and the international markets, they don't, they're already accustomed to business as usual. You know, the suit, you know, the guy, you know, okay, let's go and shake hands, let's talk shop, and then we leave. We as women, you know, we have to understand, you know, how we communicate is very well received and, um, and you know, and, and, how, and how we communicate and our ability to be discreet and our, um, to, to take very careful or confidential information and be able to solve, creatively uh, seek solutions is really the key. And so as a result, I've learned um, that you earn trust from these corporations and from these companies, which is really, really important um, to people across many industries. And if I had to summarize my strengths, it would be that I have ability to network, um, to manage projects and be very, very creative. And I've been quite privileged to join in some very powerful meetings where, you know, they were looking for creative solutions with decision makers that could say, okay, Ayana, let's do it. And so, um, so I encourage you and, um, to, to do the same thing, be an influencer in the global market, um, and, and consider yourself a true global partner to, um, to these organizations that are looking for exactly what it is that you bring to the table. So in closing, um, I would like to leave you with a, a note of reality, um, inspiration and encouragement. So I'm not saying that, you know, just because you're a woman and you show up in one of these, you know, um, global markets that it, it's going to be cakewalk and, you know, your life is just going to be great. Oh, I left the U.S. and I'll, you know, everything's great. Um, there are some, uh, some balancing acts that need to be uh, considered. Uh, a lot of those are, or I would say the main one would be tradition versus progress. But I think overall it's business. Uh, the businesses want to make money. They want to grow. They want to make an impact. And so, um, so you, know, you know, as long as you can balance that del delicately and understand those challenges, you will be successful. Um, a part of that success means being prepared understanding your value and not being afraid. Sure, it's gonna take some time to evolve and to become connected, but know that there are possibilities for you as a woman in the international playing field that these markets are actively seeking out. They, they are looking for it. So there's no need to limit the applications of your skill set to one region or to one country. Um, I would suggest you know, start connecting with international business communities uh, right in your home turf, you know, depending on what city you are and what uh, market that you're interested in going in, look for those international business communities. 
uh, various consulates offices and international business chambers. They host various events, which are great for networking and simply to introduce yourself. Uh, consider your resources, um, you know, your friends and ask them, you know, what's here and then, you know, start from there. Because you never know, those interactions could lead to numerous internationally inspired possibilities. Um, if you're interested in knowing more about me, you um, feel free to shoot me an email. Uh, my email address is gardnermatthews at gmail.com. Matthews is one T, or is with one T. And I'd be happy to share with you um, a list of services and an overview of the, um, the business and existing partnerships, as well as my full biography, as I have listed on this slide. Um, we do a lot of uh, projects that relates to sell, uh, sales opening, uh, strategic planning, project management, proposals, we're accepting proposals and bids. And if you're a JET alum and, and you're working with an organization, um, and if you want to refer business, we would definitely pay you a referral fee. Just want to throw that out there. Um, simply, and when you're writing me an email, simply reference a US Jet AA webinar and today's date and the subject heading so I'll know um, which event that you're referring to. And, you know, I, I just really hope that you guys who joined really found this to be informative. Um, I'm very active on LinkedIn and other social media. So if you want to reach out to me, you know, again, the email, phone number, feel free to do so. But um, I really appreciate you guys joining uh, for this presentation on women's influence in international business. That's it. Thank you, Ayana. That was, I found it really informative. Um, it looks like we already have a couple of questions. Um, if you do have questions, please write them in the chat function or you can also uh, do the raise hand function and then use your microphone to ask the question. Um, it looks like we have a question from Kelly. Uh, do you have any tips or tricks for women starting out on their careers for how to build and maintain their network? Oh yeah, Kelly, that, that's, <laughs> it's so funny because you're reminding me of when, um, not only when I, because my background is in sales, so I would have to go to a lot of networking events and trying to, you know, like build, you know, just build my career. And then when I uh, launched the company, you have to, the trick to me is how to avoid the, um, the networking pits. And what I mean by that is the ones where they're just getting together, hanging out. No one's really talking about business. They're there for the free food. And, um, and I'm just going to say it, you know, like the guys are there, you know, just to meet the, the new girl that's showing up because, you know, <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's horrible to say. So I would say avoid um, those types of groups and organizations. And, you know, and I would say when you're going to these events or because um, I, I, I heavily use the, the international chamber. So let's say, for example, the German uh, German Chamber of Commerce in Atlanta, or um, the, um, the National Simulation Organization in Orlando. You know, I tend to start at the top. You know, reach out to the top three people within that organization. Let them know who you are. Ask them if you can. Sorry. I'm sorry about that, y'all. You know, ask them, you know, what can they do to provide you with some assistance? Ask them how they can help you um, connect with the right companies within your industry. So that way, you know, because you only have, I mean, I don't know how long you work, but like, you know, let's say eight hours in a day. So you want to be very strategic and you need to look at your time as so valuable that, you know, everything that you're doing needs to, and you need to make it count. And so my experience has been that I always start at the top. I have no problem sending a, and I won't say random, but I will reach out and connect to the president of a company with a, you know, or for assistance. And you'd be surprised at how receptive and how nice and how cooperative they are in those, uh, in those situations. So I hope that gave you a little bit of insight, Kelly. And then going off of that question, Cassie asked, do you know a better way to find these events? 
uh, and she made the comment that um, she had to look for weeks to find this webinar. So a better way to find these sorts of events. Um, so depending on the country, well, I get, can I ask where are you from? Like, wh where do you live? Where do you live? She says near Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. So, um, you can do a Google, Google search on the international, like the consulate's office. You know, even if it's an honorary consul, there has to be a list of those consul, uh, consul generals in your region. All the time they're doing some social or cultural events and there's definitely business going on. So let's take, for example, the Japan portion. You know, we know that we have like uh, various Japanese related festivals that are highlighting Japanese culture, but there, to every cultural related event, there's definitely a business related event going on. So, you know, look for the Japanese Chamber of Commerce, for example, or the um, Japan American Society of <laughs> Kentucky or Louisville. I would say do those searches that way. And then you should be able to find, let's say one or two organizations. And from there, you'll get more, like you'll learn what other organizations that exist that may be um, hard to find. I hope that answered your question. You're welcome. Okay, and we have a question from Bahia. In a culture like Japan that is very male dominated, what recommendations do you have for women to break into the boys club? Well, so, and I'm glad that you asked that question because I always found that being, you know, there are different levels. So what may be taboo or unacceptable in Japan for a Japanese woman to do? Well, simply because you're foreign, like you're able to get away with certain things. So, you know, yeah, it's a male dominated society, but you know, okay, well, they can't treat you like they would a Japanese lady because you're not. And so you have to use that to your advantage. You have to, you know, maybe that means being a little bit more assertive. Maybe that means, um, you know, using a certain type of um, Japanese when you're speaking, but definitely asserting yourself and um, when you're trying to, you know, when you're doing some work. Okay, and then we have a question from Joy. Can you share with us a specific example of an instance in which you did not feel like you weren't being taken seriously, maybe because you're a woman or some other factor, and had to use your advice to change their mind? I'm sorry, is that written? Where, where is that written? Because I want to read the question. Uh, it's under the, the chat function. I had to use my advice or I had to use my um, my experience, my experience. I guess either or. Okay. So, um, yeah, <laughs> specific example. Uh, all right. I'm a member of the World Trade, um, the World Trade Center in Atlanta. And there was a meeting that was being held, networking event afterwards, where there was a presentation by the Consul General of Cyprus, actually. So, you know, it's a, a very male dominated group, um, 50 and older. And, you know, here I am, young, energetic, um, you know, African American female. And, you know, just no one really wanted to engage or talk to me. Luckily, I knew another person um, who was already there. He's European. And, you know, we were just kind of, you know, like standing nearby, not, not together, but, you know, just like in earshot. And so there was a gentleman that came over to me and, you know, just very, uh, rather rude, actually, you know, so, oh, yeah, you know, so what, what, what are you doing here? And I'm like, um, I'm a member. And, you know, this was a good event for me to come and learn about um, a country I don't know very much about. And I wanted to, you know, take the opportunity to meet some more people um, that I knew that would be here from Europe. So then he went to ask, you know, what did I do? So I explained it to him, you know, uh, glo global uh, travel concierge services and international business development. That man asked me five times, 
in five different ways, but he's asking the same question. So what do you do? What do you do? And it was so annoying where I'm just like, okay, you know, you don't want to blow up. And, but at the same time, you're just like, I mean, like, you know, are you not understanding the English or are you not understanding that it's me who's doing it? And so luckily, because I had one of my uh, ambassadors um, present with me, he automatically, you know, stepped in and he says, look, you know, like, I mean, she's, she's answering your question. I'm hearing her repeat, repeat the answer five or six times. He's like, you know, what is your problem? And then all of a sudden it clicks. Oh, international business. So sometimes you have to understand that people will, you know, try to, you know, look at you depending on, you know, what you look like and expect, you know, as a woman and say, oh, it's no way that you um, can be an authority in this particular um, uh, job function. And you just have to be assertive, you know, um, don't, you can't cry. You know, you definitely don't take it personally, but you have to kind of put it back on them, you know, like, so what exactly are you really asking and make them answer that. And if they can't, you know, just address it on the spot, what advice to, that I can give to others on how to navigate legal requirements of creating your own business? Did I hire a lawyer, get a friend to help or teach yourself? Oh my God. I would say um, to this day, to this date, I constantly talk to business owners all the time. And from uh, whether they're restaurant owners or if they're, um, you know, they have their own law firm, constantly talking to them about, you know, anything. Um, there was one um, young lady who, who started her own um, bed and breakfast in Houston. And she, the name of her company has been around for at least 15 years. She recently got sued for the name of the company. Somebody found out that she, you know, named the, the business. Um, I think it was called Wonderlust Travel or something like that. And she was being sued. So in that particular case, you know, she was like, you know, being able to use, you know, hey, I, I you know, incorporated this business in this year. Here's my paperwork. Um, I think she did hers on LegalZoom, which is how I did mine, by the way. Um, that's how I launched the business. Um, and then, you know, but someone's coming at you, you know, by asking for money with a lawsuit, then yeah, I, I think you need to hire a professional. But, um, and I think it all, but, you know, let's just go back to the core question. It depends on what kind of business are you starting, you know, um, would determine what type of approach you need to, to take, whether you hire a lawyer or you just take the advice of a friend. And so I think you need to consider that very seriously. Um, utilize existing businesses and talk to those business owners about some of the things that they've encountered because the thing is you can learn from other people's mistakes and you don't have to uh, make those painful mistakes yourself or the costly mistakes yourself and you know you're constantly doing research I mean or you should constantly be doing research not only on trends not only on social media and marketing but you need to be researching you know what's going on you know, if you're taking credit cards, for example, what systems may be getting hacked, you know, that you need to, um, you know, be aware of and maybe not use or, or something like that. But um, so, yeah, I, I, that would be my suggestion. Uh, do you have anything else, Casey? Sarah is on mute. Uh, it looks like we have a question from Alan, which is a little bit longer. Uh, studies show that Japan is actually one of the more difficult places for a woman to be treated equally. How can a female alumni who has come, who has worked in Japan, use this experience to her advantage when returning to the U.S.? And then what do male alumni who have recently returned from Japan need to be careful of doing, not doing back in the U.S.? Well, oh, that's a really uh, good question there. <laughs> So um, being a female uh, JET alum, we require so many useful skills. We've worked um, essentially for Japanese government. So we know how to function and we've seen the epitome of bu bureaucracy. You know, even if your BOE was uh, easy going, I mean, we've just seen certain things. We're just like, really, is this really happening? So we can bring that um, ability to 
communicate effectively, uh, cross-culturally communicate into a regular communication process where everyone is speaking English and everyone you know, kind of knows what to do. Um, we also learn in Japan as a female Jet AA to be very observant, to watch and um, you know, as they say, read the air. So when we come back to the States, we're able to you know, kind of feel certain things because we've had that experience in Japan. And so that is really, oh, the question just went away, uh, really advantageous. advantageous. So, um, you know, to, to a female um, returning uh, to the U.S. workforce. Um, I think they're, um, the organization that we acquire, and, and this is for men as well, um, that we've acquired by being in the JET program, you know, uh, the uh, Tadaki Kai, you know, the work working document, the planning, the outlining, um, being able to understand logistics is really, really key. Um, and very helpful in being able to navigate corporate America. And so we're actually perceived as very high functioning um, uh, individuals, right? As soon as we come back and, and enter into the US workforce. So those are just a, a couple of things that I can highlight. Um, and what we bring back as a JET alumna. Uh, what do men or male JET alum need to be, who have recently returned from Japan, need to be careful of doing or not doing back in the USA? Hmm. I would say primarily, um, Well, and it's not necessarily, you know, coming back to you, just something I think men should be cautious and careful of anyway. It's just not falling into, you know, the good old boy system. Listen to your female colleagues of suggestions and advice and, you know, find ways to enhance what she's saying, you know, like, you know, whether it's pulling her off to the side and saying, you know, hey, well, you know, Ayana, you know, exactly what were you trying to, you know, go for there or, you know, try to help. And in ways that they could be champions and help that uh, female um, colleague be successful in that group and not, you know, try to minimize her. I, I, th that would be the main uh, point that I would uh, highlight is uh, for what to be careful not to do. Don't, don't, don't come back to America and fall back and say, oh, yeah, you know, well, this is how it's always, done, always been done. Um, you know, take it as an opportunity to, um, you know, be able to, to help and assist that colleague. Because as I mentioned, the women have an ability to go into places that men, uh, you know, everyone thinks traditionally men can just, you know, go into some of these places. But there are some places that well, women, women can go and that men can't. And there's certain information that a woman can attain that may not be readily um, shared with a male um, business acquaintance. So we just need to keep that in mind as well. So I hope that answered your question, sir. Casey, do we have anything else? Uh, okay, so since we're almost reaching time, if anyone has any last minute questions, um, please type those in now. Um, it also looks like we have a question from Bahia. Could you elaborate on the concept of tradition versus progress in the global market? specifically in Japan? Uh, so, you know, yeah, the, um, you know, separation of women, um, you know, women can, can be, so like, you know, tradition, traditionally women um, aren't seen, and even present day, you don't see a lot of women in authoritative, authoritative positions, and you don't see a lot of women who hold high positions beyond, let's say, a manager or a supervisor, let alone a director or a president. And so um, even though Japan is a very progressive, um, technologically advanced uh, super country, you know, with this high GDP, but some of the traditions um, still are being battled, um, you know, by simply not allowing women or women are still uh, quietly fighting for their place at the table for business. And so that's what I mean by tradition. What, you know, well, you know, these are customs. This is how we always done it because, you know, you know, it, men are conducting business here. Well, there are a lot of women in Japan that want to and very and are very successful um, in conducting business as well. And so when you pair that with, you know, the advancement of the country, 
Um, you know, Japan, especially with the Olympics, they're going to, you know, they're forced to, you know, probably not show some of the ugly sides, you know, that the society has to the international world. And so I think once the Olympics um, passes, there will be um, some change uh, to Tokyo or Japan. And the reason why I say that, because when we had the Olympics um, in Atlanta, which is my hometown, there were significant changes um, in our tradition, you know, being a, a, the, the junior New York of the South, um, you know, with our, you know, way of life that was impacted by this international uh, group and these visitors that came in and things did change. So um, from business as well as, um, um, you know, just the society or the community itself. Okay, it looks like we don't have any other questions. Okay. Uh, so if you do have questions, um, you can co connect with Ayana on uh, the social media. Um, also send out your um, your information, your email and everything uh, with the links that you provide later um, to all of the people who attended. I want to thank everyone for joining the webinar in our alumni webinar series. Uh, and thank you, Ayana, for being here today and speaking with everyone and answering their questions. Our next webinar is on April 16th and it will cover uh, resume building. Um, so be sure to like our Facebook page uh, to receive notifications when we schedule this. Uh, stay tuned for the recording. Uh, we should be able to post it in the next week or so. It will also be available on our website and our Facebook page and our event page. So thank you for joining. And thank you guys very much. And again, if you need to reach out to me, um, there's a slide listed here with all the, um, the social media connects, but feel free to send me an email and don't be afraid to call. So um, I really appreciate you guys joining in and asking some really um, great questions. Thank you. Yeah, and we'll send out all of the, your information and everything um, and the links that you said that you would um, provide people with um, so they can follow up. Uh, and we'll have this posted so everyone can check it out on our Facebook page if they want to watch it. Okay. I think that's everything. Um, good night, everyone. Good night, everybody.